This March, Prince Charles and his wife Camilla toured Louisville. On their itinerary was the Cathedral of the Assumption, where the Prince of Wales received the Festival of Faith's Lifetime Achievement Award. Center for Interfaith Relations Managing Director Sarah Reed Harris joins us to talk about that and more. Welcome. Thank you very much. We want to talk about the festival, but first tell us about the award for Prince Charles. Oh, it was so exciting. And uh, we've actually been uh, engaging Prince Charles in the work that we've been doing here in Louisville for several years. Uh, and he uh, was so impressed with the 20 year history of hosting Festival of Faith events was so impressed with the role that Cathedral of the Assumption has played in the interfaith conversation. Uh, it just seemed like the right place to host his public talk. Uh, now I want you to explain Festival of Faith and while you do that, give us a little history of it. Um, well, it's very uh, original roots came from a restoration project of the Cathedral of the Assumption. And in the course of doing the research on the cathedral, uh, it was discovered that at the time the cathedral was built, there were s all major religions had a house of worship within six blocks. So mm. the cathedral truly was physically and um, culturally the center, the spiritual center of the city. Mm. So the uh, effort to renovate the cathedral was very, was supported by people of all different faiths. And then in celebration when the cathedral was finished, they launched a five-day celebration, and that celebration was so um, successful and popular that it became an annual affair, and we are now celebrating our 20th. We've grown, we've got national, international um, recognition. We were able to play a role in uh, the visit of His Holiness the Dalai Lama as well. Um, we were able to uh, partner with the hosts of that event by providing an interfaith panel of international stature. So. A special focus this year is Thomas Merton, whose birth was 100 years ago. Why do you think Merton remains relevant for the festival? Uh, he was so honest, and he really shows his sacred journey uh, in all of his writing and especially in his journals. Uh, he was unafraid to question uh, organized uh, religion. Uh, he was unafraid to question his own experiences with grace. And all of that opens uh, a door to even people in the modern day to um, feel safe to question and learn and be transformed by those questions. Tell us more about what you expect from this year's festival. It runs May 12th through the 16th. Right. Uh, this year, uh, the last three years, we've hosted a, a sacred series. We had Sacred Silence, where we talked about the importance of meditation and contemplation in your faith. We had Sacred Earth, Sacred Self, where we talked about the uh, sacred relationship we have with each other and with the Earth. This year's theme is Sacred Journeys, mm -hmm. um, and we will be talking about, um, we'll be recognizing that everybody is in a sacred journey of some sort. You can either be awake to that and participate in it, um, or be carried along um, uh, without being really engaged in mm -hmm. it. So we have conversations uh, about the sacred journey um, with personal context, you know, how do you know what's true self and what's not true self? How do you know um, how to be authentic in a community and versus just being busy and doing good works? You know, how do you really show compassion and how do you really show love for your fellow man and for the earth? And uh, we have some uh, international faith leaders coming to talk about some global issues. I mean, phenomenal speakers. A cardinal from Nigeria is coming. Uh, Sheikh, uh, a Mauritanian, Mauritanian Sheikh will be coming uh, to talk about the global issues of the climate, um, extremist, extremist behaviors, um, and I mean, it's a tremendous opportunity to have people of that stature this year. Tell us about the work of the Center for Interfaith Relations and how the annual festival fits in with its goals. Uh, the, our motto at the Center for Interfaith Relations is many faiths, one heart, common action. And we do believe that the city is richer because of the uh, diversity of faiths uh, in the community. And we also support uh, lives that are contemplative uh, and mindful. Um, what we have discovered is that we have a unique niche in that we can convene once a year um, an opportunity to uh, convene and catalyze is what we say, that to bring people together. It's a touch point where we can come back and reconnect as an interfaith group, 
uh, talk about issues that are critically important in our day and reinforce the fact that we are connected, that, you know, that we don't live in silos, that we live in one community and um, that we are connected. All right, well, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing. We well, appreciate it. Thank you for having us. And if I could, this is Sacred Journeys, May 12th through 17th. All right, thank you. Thanks.